This presentation is about the Caterpillar Brake Saver. The brake saver is used to control the speed of a vehicle when the extended use of the service brakes is not safe or desired. The brake saver gives the operator added control of the vehicle with a heavy load on curves, grades, and at other times when the reduction of speed is necessary. Please take a few minutes to familiarize yourself with the seven worksheets that accompany this presentation. They detail the various parts and components of the brake saver. You'll be asked to refer to these worksheets from time to time. You may wish to stop the tape periodically to study these worksheets. The brake saver works on the same principle as the hydraulic retarder on Caterpillar tractor scrapers. Some of the advantages of the brake saver are added life of the service brakes, no noise from its operation, and a braking effect up to 100% of the rated engine horsepower at the flywheel. This 3406 truck engine is equipped with a brake saver. The brake saver is installed on the flywheel housing of the engine. We'll give an explanation of the brake saver and a description of the brake saver installation on a 3406 truck engine. The brake saver is adaptable to other truck engines. The system arrangement will be different for each different engine, but the components and their operation will be similar. This truck engine is installed like an industrial engine. It's especially equipped with controls and instruments for use as a training engine. Components of the brake saver system we can see on the outside of the engine are the oil cooler and the oil control valve on the bottom rear of the engine and oil pan. The engine oil pan is the common reservoir for brake saver oil and engine oil. The brake saver charging pump and engine oil pump are in the oil pan on the bottom of the engine block. The oil cooler removes heat from the oil from the operation of both the engine and the brake saver. The oil goes to the cooler through the rear tube and comes back from the oil cooler through the front tube. The oil filter is in the oil system of the engine. The oil pump of the engine sends oil through the oil filter to the oil manifold of the engine. From the oil manifold, oil is sent to the engine parts. The oil filter base has a bypass valve. In truck installations, the oil filter can be at a remote location. Please refer to worksheet number one. This shows the inside connections of the brake saver oil system as it is on the 3406 truck engine. We see the oil pump, the brake saver oil control valve, the oil tubes to the brake saver, and the oil tubes to and from the oil cooler. The engine oil pan and the brake saver are seen as broken lines. The oil pump is a two-section gear-type pump. The larger front section is the engine oil pump. The smaller rear section is the brake saver charging pump. The charging pump gets oil from the suction bell in the oil pan and sends oil through the tube to the elbow fitting in the center, which connects the oil control valve. The control valve sends oil to the brake saver and or the oil cooler. The elbow fitting in the oil pan has a bypass valve. This bypass valve prevents oil pressures of more than 85 PSI. When the oil is cold and thick and the pressure is too high, the valve lets the extra oil go back in the oil pan. Return oil flow from the brake saver and oil cooler goes back into the oil pan through the fitting at the right. When the brake saver is in the off position, the brake saver drains the oil in the brake saver back to the oil pan through the left fitting. The oil cooler is in the brake saver oil system and removes heat from both the brake saver operation and engine operation. The rotor turns inside a compartment between the stator and the brake saver housing. Both the stator and the housing have a ring of pockets around the outside circumference. These pockets are opposite the veins in the rotor. Oil comes in the rotor compartment near the center through a passage from the bottom of the housing. Oil fills the compartment. The rotor, turning with the crankshaft, throws the oil in a radial direction. At the outer circumference, rotor vanes push the oil into the pockets of the stator and the housing. When the rotor turns and the oil flows around the brake saver compartment, it takes the shape of a spiral. This is a toroidal form of flow. The rotor vanes cut into the oil flow inside the brake saver compartment. This cutting action changes the energy of the rotor to heat in the oil in the compartment. The heat is removed by the oil cooler and goes into the engine cooling system. All stationary parts are gray. 
All parts that move or turn are yellow, and oil is shown in red. The braking effect of the brake saver is proportional to the oil quantity cut by the rotor vanes. When the brake saver is off, the control valve closes the inlet passage to the rotor compartment. There is no oil in the compartment between the rotor and the stator pockets. When the brake saver inlet passage is open to charging pump pressure, an oil flow of spiral shape flows between the rotor and the stator. Inside the spiral flow of oil is an air pocket. An increase of pressure inside the rotor compartment puts compression on this air pocket inside the oil flow and gives an increase in the braking effect of the brake saver. For this reason, the pressure of the inlet oil is used to control the braking effect. The position of the air control valve controls the position of the spool of the oil control valve and the pressure of the inlet oil to the brake saver. Please refer to worksheet 2. This shows the brake saver oil system and the oil system of the 3406 truck engine equipped with a brake saver. First we'll look at the engine oil system. The engine oil pump, the front section, sends oil to the filter base and through the oil filter, then to the oil manifold of the engine. The engine oil pump has a pressure regulating valve. The oil filter base has a bypass valve. The oil cooler in the brake saver oil system removes the engine heat from the oil. Now let's look at the brake saver oil system. The brake saver is off. The control valve in the off position. The brake saver charging pump sends oil to the oil control valve. The control valve sends the oil through the oil cooler, back to the control valve again, and to the oil pan of the engine. When the brake saver is off, there is no oil flow to the brake saver. There is flow through the oil cooler only to remove heat from the oil. This is an illustration of the brake saver oil system with the brake saver on. The control valve is in the on position. The brake saver charging pump sends oil to the oil control valve and through it to the brake saver. The oil gets hot from the operation of the brake saver. From the brake saver, the oil goes back to the control valve, through the oil cooler, and to the control valve again. After the filling period, the control valve sends part of the oil to the brake saver and part of the oil goes to the oil pan of the engine. Now, let's look at the flow of oil through the oil control valve. Please refer to worksheet 3. This shows all the components of the brake saver oil system. We'll use it to give an explanation of the brake saver oil system, specifically the flow of oil through the oil control valve. We see the brake saver air control valve, oil control valve, oil cooler, charging pump of the brake saver, brake saver, and the engine oil pan or reservoir. The brake saver air control valve sends air to the left end of the oil control valve. This moves the spool to the right. The air control valve also releases the air from the system when the valve is in the off position. The spring in the oil control valve can then move the spool to the left. The spool of the oil control valve has two small holes which feel the oil pressure. The hole that feels the in pressure is in the spool at the top left end of the spring chamber. The hole that feels the out pressure is in the bottom of the spool at the right end of the spring chamber. The brake saver oil in passage is on the left in the illustration. The oil out passage is on the right. When the brake saver is off, the spool is in the left end position. Oil goes from the charging pump to the oil control valve. The spool is in a position to send oil through the oil cooler and return the oil to the engine oil pan. No oil goes to the brake saver. The brake saver outlet line is open to the oil pan. When the brake saver is off, the air end of the spool is open to atmosphere by the air control valve. The spring in the spool keeps the spool against the left cover of the oil control valve. Now, let's look at the system immediately after the brake saver air control valve is put in the on position. Control air has moved the spool fully to the right and the brake saver is activated. Oil goes from the charging pump to the oil control valve and the spool sends the oil to the brake saver. The brake saver sends the oil back to the valve through the oil cooler and back to the valve. Flow will be through this circuit as long as the spool is in this position for a maximum of two seconds. During brake saver operation, there will be some movements on the spool in the valve body. 
This is caused by changes of the signal pressure. A higher signal pressure moves the spool to the left. A lower pressure moves it to the right. The signal pressure is the average pressure between the oil in pressure and the oil out pressure. The small holes in the valve spool permit the oil in and the oil out pressure to get into the spring chamber. As a result, the combination of the pressures in the spring chamber give a signal pressure. This pressure, together with the force of the spring, works against the control air pressure. The difference between signal pressure and control air pressure causes movement of the spool during operation of the brake saver. While the brake saver is in operation, the spool is moved a little to the left by the signal pressure. The flow is the same as in the on description except some oil, approximately 40%, is constantly going back to the engine oil pan for oil cooling. Approximately 60% of the oil flow goes constantly through the brake saver. When the valve spool moves as a result of the signal pressure changes, the oil flow to the brake saver changes in quantity and the brake saver torque increases or decreases. The brake saver has operated and the oil control valve is now moved to off. The flow of oil from the charging pump to the brake saver is stopped. The brake saver rotor pushes the oil in the brake saver through the drain passage in the right end of the spool back to the oil pan. This removes the oil from the brake saver. Oil from the charging pump goes to the oil control valve, the oil cooler, the control valve, and back to the oil pan. This circuit removes the heat from the oil. Please refer to worksheet four. The brake saver can have a manual control system or an automatic manual control system. Both systems give the operator control of the brake saver from the cab of the truck. This is the manual control system. The system has a pressure reducing valve, a hand control valve, and an air pressure gauge for the brake saver. The control system also has an oil temperature gauge for the brake saver, which measures the temperature of the oil at the oil cooler outlet. The control system is connected to the air system of the truck. The pressure reducing valve keeps a specific limit of air pressure in the system circuit and the line to the hand control valve. The air control circuit is connected to the oil control valve. The pressure setting of the reducing valve can be different for different engines. Here we see the hand control valve in the off position. In the off position, the hand control valve releases the air pressure from the air line to the oil control valve, and the spring in the oil control valve moves the valve spool to the off position. The location of the pressure reducing valve can be in the truck cab or on the firewall in the engine compartment. Its location will not be the same on all trucks. When you turn the hand control valve in the on position, pressure air goes to the oil control valve and moves the spool. This activates the brake saver. The hand control valve gives a variable air pressure to the oil control valve. The operator can control this by the movement of the valve lever. The range is variable from full off to full on. This way, the valve gives modulation to the braking effect of the brake saver. Please refer to worksheet five. This is the air control system with both manual and automatic control. We see the components of the manual system. The automatic system has the solenoid valve, the electrical circuit to activate the solenoid valve, and the two-way check valve to connect the manual and automatic system together. The switches of the electrical circuit switches are in series. In the electrical circuit, we have in series the battery, start or disconnect switch, mode selector switch, accelerator switch, and clutch switch. When the mode selector switch is in the manual position, the brake saver control valve is activated by air through the hand control valve only. When the selector switch is in the automatic manual position, the brake saver control valve can be activated by the hand control valve or the automatic system. The brake saver is activated automatically only when all switches in circuit are closed. The accelerator switch is closed when the accelerator is up. The clutch switch is closed when the clutch is engaged. An auxiliary switch on the engine governor will replace the accelerator pedal switch on the 3406 truck engine. Here we see the hand control valve in the on position. The two-way check valve stops the flow of air into the automatic air circuit. The brake saver is activated. The automatic system is off. 
the switches are open. Here we see the hand control valve in the off position. The automatic system is on. The electrical switches, the mode selector switch, the accelerator and clutch switches are closed. The brake saver is activated. The check valve stops the flow of air to the hand control circuit. The automatic system has no variable control of the brake saver. It is either full on or full off. Only the hand control valve gives modulation. Here we see a cross section of the brake saver stator and housing which shows the oil passages for lubrication at the seals. The flow of oil from the engine oil system comes in at the top of the housing. An orifice in the stator and one in the housing keeps the flow of oil limited to approximately 0.33 gallons per minute. The oil goes through the passages to the grooves in the bore in the stator and the housing and the grooves in the sleeves. The oil gives lubrication to the lip type seals and the piston ring type seals while the brake saver is not operating. The passages below take the oil to the outside drain lines. This is the rear of a 3406 truck engine. The flexible tube is the supply line and sends lubrication oil from the engine to the fitting in the brake saver housing. Here we see the drain line that sends lubrication oil back to the engine oil pan. The fitting for the drain line can be on either side of the housing. The production brake saver has a different elbow which is fastened to the brake saver housing with bolts. This elbow sends the lubrication oil through a drain line back to the oil pan. Please refer to worksheet 6. Here we see a cross section of the brake saver. We'll use this illustration to find the location of brake saver parts and to learn their names. The brake saver has a stator and a housing. Between these two parts is the brake saver compartment. The rotor turns in the compartment. The rotor is fastened to the engine crankshaft with the plate for the starter ring gear forward and the flywheel on the rear. The hub of the rotor has a carrier on both the front and rear side. Each carrier holds a piston ring type seal. The hub also has a wear sleeve for a lip type seal on the front and the rear of the hub. The stator and the housing each have a sleeve in the bore for the rotor. A retaining ring holds the sleeve in the bore. The sleeve gives a surface for the piston ring type seal to fit and make a seal. The sleeve also holds the lip type seal. Each sleeve has an O-ring seal around the outside to hold oil in the stator and the housing. An O-ring seal around the outer flange of the stator makes a seal between the stator and the housing. The piston ring type seals in the carriers hold oil in the rotor compartment when the brake saver is in operation. The lip seals prevent the leakage of oil from the brake saver. This is the brake saver on the engine. The oil manifold and tubes are below the housing. Here we see the flywheel and the mounting bolts of the flywheel. This is the 9N46 cover. It's a shipping cover and a service tool. The cover fits closely over the hub of the rotor and against the back of the housing of the brake saver. The cover holds the rotor in the center of the brake saver housing and prevents it from moving against the seals. Movement of the rotor against the seals can cause some damage. The brake saver housing is fastened to the flywheel housing of the engine with hex head bolts. This is the front of the brake saver. The plate for the starter ring gear is on the front of the unit. The plate for the starter ring gear is fastened to the rotor with hex head bolts. When the brake saver is installed, the timing of the plate to the crankshaft is important. The crankshaft has a locating dowel which fits in the hole near the center of the plate. The plate must be in alignment with the crankshaft so that the holes for the timing bolt are in the correct position. The timing bolt holes give the location of number one and number six piston at the top center position. This is the outside of the stator. The plate for the ring gear is removed. The stator is fastened to the brake saver housing with bolts. We see the hub of the rotor. The lip type seal for the front of the brake saver is in the sleeve. The sleeve is in the stator bore. Here we can see the inside of the stator and the stator pockets. We see the O-ring seal which makes a seal between the stator and the housing. The small hole on the outer flange of the stator is the orifice in the oil passage for seal lubrication. This orifice limits flow to the seal compartment. And again we see the sleeve with the lip type seal. The retaining ring holds the sleeve in the bore of the stator. 
we see the O-ring on the sleeve, which makes a seal with the stator. We can also see the grooves for oil in the bore of the stator and the sleeve. Oil for lubrication gets to the seals through these grooves. On different brake saver models and applications, the location of the grooves changes. There must always be a groove in either the bore or the sleeve. This is a view of the rotor and the housing after the stator is removed. See the veins or ribs on the rotor. Here we see the brake saver housing on the left and the rotor. The housing also has a series of pockets which are opposite the veins on the rotor. Oil comes into the brake saver compartment through the opening under the sleeve. The oil drains out of the compartment through the opening in the bottom of the housing. The fitting on the top of the housing is for the oil which gives lubrication to the seals. The fittings below are for the lines which drain oil from the seal compartments. The small O-rings around the housing make a seal in the oil passages between the housing and the stator. The hub of the rotor has a wear sleeve for the lip type seal and a carrier with a piston ring type seal. Here we can see the wear sleeve and the carrier. In the groove of the carrier, see the piston ring type seal. This piston ring type seal is not very hard. Please refer to worksheet 7. This is the brake saver oil control valve. The openings on the top, left to right, are the drain passage from the brake saver to the oil pan, oil inlet from the brake saver charging pump, and the oil outlet to the oil pan of the engine. Control air is connected to the hole in the right cover. The two large openings on the right are for the oil cooler. The top opening is to the oil cooler, and the lower opening is from the oil cooler. The two large openings on the left are to the brake saver. The right opening is to the brake saver, and the left is from the brake saver. The large plug near the right opening is the connection point for the oil temperature gauge. Here we see the parts removed from the body of the oil control valve. Above, left to right, are the cover, body, and cover. Below are the slug, spring, stop, spring, and spool. On the right end of the spool is a diaphragm. The diaphragm gives protection to the end of the valve from dirt and moisture in the air system. The bottom of the brake saver oil control valve has pressure taps for measuring the pressure of oil for troubleshooting. Identification of the taps is written on the valve body as shown here. To measure the pressures, connect gauges to these taps. Checking these pressures is an important part in troubleshooting brake saver problems. These pressure taps are from brake saver, to brake saver, from engine, to engine, to cooler, from cooler, and air tap. The large plug in the lower center is the drain plug for the system. This concludes our presentation on the Caterpillar Brake Saver.